provided by. Stay ahead of your moderate to severe eczema and show off clearer skin and less itch with Dupixin, the number one prescribed biologic by dermatologists and allergists that helps heal your skin from within. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Ask your eczema specialist about Dupixin. Tomorrow on E.T., only we're with Jim Parsons talking his young Sheldon send-off. It's like, do I still know how to talk like this? <laughs> oh, you know I belong to the church of Jim Parsons. Anything he does, I'm there. He is the greatest. Happening now. An entire community expressing its grief after the deaths of a woman and her three-year-old son. I'll tell you why some people say this didn't have to happen. Donald Trump may have the backing of many high-ranking Republicans, but some are not following suit. Who is joining Mike Pence in not supporting the former president? Drizzle and overall dampness starting to move in. Also, a shot at a few thunderstorms. I'll have the timing of that and where we could have a few severe storms in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, it was a shocking discovery, and now we all seem to be trying to make sense of the apparent murder-suicide of a woman and her three-year-old son. Not long after they were reported missing, the bodies of Savannah Krieger and her son Caden found in a ditch near Tom Slick Park off Highway 151. Katrina Weber with the impact of this horrible tragedy on the community and what police think happened. There was no ignoring the scene that had overtaken Tom Slick Park Tuesday morning. Beyond the yellow tape and patrol cars were two bodies believed to be those of 32-year-old Savannah Krieger and her three-year-old son, Caden, both reported missing. At this point, uh, she's the she's the who we're considering the suspect. Of course, we're going to process the scene thoroughly to make sure of that. While Sheriff Javier Salazar made it clear this is still an open case, he also said it appears no one else was involved. He says investigators found a gun nearby, which Savannah may have used to shoot her son and herself. There's been some sort of a custody battle going on, ongoing with the with the, uh, the the custody of the baby. Today, colorful balloons replaced the troubling sights, but not the thoughts on people's minds. This woman, through her tears, told us she came to pay respects to the mother and son who she didn't even know. This is clearly a case that has affected people all over, from comments on social media to gifts left here at the scene. Even perfect strangers are expressing their grief. That poor little boy and what the mom must have been thinking, I just, it's just really devastating. Amanda Stoneberger lives down the street from their home. As a mother of five herself, she wonders why this had to happen. We all have friends who are hurting and we all want them to reach out to us and ask for help and it's like really hard for moms to do. Many people are having a hard time now dealing with what has been done. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The law that would let local and state officials arrest and deport migrants on hold again. Less than 24 hours ago, the U.S. Supreme Court lifted its temporary freeze on that law and allowed SB 4 to go into effect for several hours. But late last night, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals paused the Texas law again. That ruling not a surprise. Proponents of SB 4, including Governor Greg Abbott, were anticipating this very possibility. This morning, the three-judge panel actually on the federal appeals court heard arguments on the controversial law that would allow Texas law enforcement to arrest and deport people that have entered the U.S. illegally. According to the Associated Press, the chief judge Priscilla Richmond asked attorneys about how SB 4 would be carried out, including how the state of Texas would respond if federal authorities do not cooperate with a state judge's <coughs> order to deport someone. It's a question the state is considering closely since the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has said it would not have authority to deport under the state law. Texas Solicitor General reportedly answered that question by saying this is unchartered because the state didn't have any cases of it. Today's hearing ended without a decision, so for now, SB4 is back on hold. 
Now, while the legal battle of SB4 continues in that courtroom, Texas law enforcement leaders along the border are trying to remain calm and figure out how this law will be enforced. Laredo's police chief is stressing to his community that SB4 won't be used as a way to just round up anybody or just ask for somebody's immigration status. He said there must be a cause for officers to do it. Let me be very, very clear that this law can be applied uh, during a lawful detention or an arrest. It can be just by seeing somebody and thinking, the officer thinking that he's not from here and then asking for, for documents. It doesn't work like that. Hoy, además, estamos en un momento crítico donde la Suprema Corte de Estados Unidos aprobó hoy. Ayer había puesto un impas, pero hoy aprobó la ley SB4, que es una ley antimigrante, xenofóbica, discriminatoria. This law, big news on both sides of the border. That was Mexico's foreign affairs minister reacting to SB4's brief enactment yesterday. Alicia Barcena actually telling media in Mexico that SB4's approval by the Supreme Court, a critical moment, and that the Texas law is anti-immigrant, xenophobic, and discriminatory. In a statement provided to CNN, the country's foreign affairs ministry says, quote, Mexico vehemently condemns any measure that allows state or local authorities to carry out immigration control duties, detain and deport national or foreign people to Mexican territory, end quote. We'll continue to bring you any and all updates regarding SB4 as they happen right here on air and, of course, online. Moving on to national politics and vote 2024. Over the past few months, former President Donald Trump has racked up endorsements from high-ranking members of the GOP and some former primary opponents. But there are several big names who say they do not plan to support the presumptive Republican nominee. Our Washington correspondent Julia Benbrook joins us live from the White House with details on all this. Who will endorse, who won't? Julia. Well, after the first primary contest of the season, it became very clear that former President Donald Trump's hold on the Republican Party was strong. And several of his primary opponents quickly jumped in to endorse him after they stepped out of the race. But there are a few former allies who are not backing him. Several of Donald Trump's primary opponents started campaigning for the former president quickly after they suspended their own campaigns, including America businessman Vivek Ramaswamy and South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. I just love you. But not all of Trump's former opponents are falling in line. In an interview with Fox News, former Vice President Mike Pence said he cannot endorse the president he once served with. Donald Trump is pursuing and articulating an agenda that is a at odds with the conservative agenda that, that we governed on during our four years. In a USA Today op-ed, former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson made his stance clear, writing, quote, I have not endorsed Donald Trump for president and I will not do so. Hutchinson, who was critical of Trump on the presidential campaign trail, wrote, Regretfully, Donald Trump has redefined the GOP in his image and has put personal ego above the common good. Eight Republican candidates have qualified and have chosen to be here. In order to get on the debate stage last year, the Republican candidates signed an RNC pledge promising to support the eventual nominee. Trump's former U.N. ambassador, Nikki Haley, has not made an official announcement of support, but has suggested she's no longer bound by that pledge. I think I'll make what decision I want to make. When Haley announced that she was suspending her campaign, she called on Trump to earn the votes of those who backed her instead of endorsing him. Both Trump and Biden are trying to gain the support of Haley's supporters. Reporting live at the White House, Julia Benbrook, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Julia. Now to the courthouse. An ex-officer losing in court. Motion denied. That was the ruling today from Judge Joel Perez in the change of venue motion filed in the James Brennan case. Brennan, the ex-SAPD officer who shot a teenager in 2022 outside of McDonald's. Erica Hernandez has been following this case and tells us what happens next. The defendant's uh, James Brennan's motion for change of venue is hereby denied. A future trial for James Brennan will not be moving from Bear County. 
At a hearing over a week ago, Brennan's attorneys argued that he wouldn't get a fair trial here, with the state saying there was a big enough jury pool in Bear County to pick the right jurors. Brennan, in October 2022, was arrested and charged for shooting then 17-year-old Eric Cantu. Cantu was in a McDonald's parking lot when Brennan noticed the vehicle he was in matched the same vehicle in a previous evading arrest case. Body-worn camera footage showed Brennan fire multiple rounds in the vehicle where Cantu and his female friend were eating as Cantu attempted to back up and drive away. The case garnered national attention as Cantu recovered from the hospital. Eventually, Brennan was indicted on a charge of attempted murder and two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant. The case on February 27th was re-indicted and the attempted murder charge was dropped and a deadly conduct firearm charge added. It's not the decision we wanted from the judge, but again, the facts are the facts. They don't change. The law is the law and it doesn't change. And we believe that if any jury, including a Bear County jury, hears those facts, that they'll see that Mr. Brennan was justified. The case the case now moves forward and will be gearing up for trial. A tentative trial date has been set to take place later this year in November. If found guilty, Brennan is facing 5 to 99 years or life in prison. We reached out to the district attorney's office about two days ruling but have not heard back. As for Eric Cantu, after his hospitalization, he has gotten two more new charges, a theft charge and evading arrest charge. He is awaiting trial for those. His next court date is next week. Erica Hernandez, case at 12 News. A San Antonio attorney says actions from the Bear County District Attorney's Office have caused the cards to be unfairly stacked against her client. While prosecutors have told attorney Carolyn Wentland that their dismissal of a DWI charge against a key witness had nothing to do with the woman's prior testimony against her client's co-defendant, internal county records appear to show that was not the case. Wentland says the revelation is the latest roadblock she's been encountering in the case. A motion to suppress evidence hearing this month included several tense exchanges between Wentland and the visiting judge overseeing the case. I'm watching a girl text. What, what the is the relevance of that? Judge, Can you explain that to me. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we are going to take a closer look at the state's case and why Wentland says it's been hampered by discovery issues for months now. New at five, an armored truck crew happy to be alive after they were robbed at gunpoint while trying to make a stop this morning. Police are saying that the truck was making the stop on Austin Highway on the northeast side when two suspects hopped out of a nearby car and ordered the crews to get on the ground and look away. No shots fired. Those robbers got away with an unknown amount of cash. Police have no suspect or getaway information. If you know anything about the robbery, SAPD would like to hear from you the number. Uh, is also posted on our website, ksat.com. Check out traffic right now with your time saver traffic. I-10 at Wurzbach, and you can see it is very busy in both directions. I believe we're looking at the eastbound lanes that are coming at us right now as it get, heads towards 410. But traffic is moving. No major traffic tie-ups to tell you about at this hour. Little bit warmer today than yesterday, but you don't really feel a whole lot of a difference out there. 54 this morning, 64 for the high. These clouds keeping us at only a 10 degree temperature spread from sunrise into our afternoon high temperature, and we're a good 11 degrees below average. 67 Eagle Pass, 68 Del Rio. Most of us actually in the 60s right now, 63 Mico, but 68 in Windcrest. You have to head farther north in Texas to get into the 70s. A few stray sprinkles this evening. More so later tonight after sunset by 10 o'clock and thereafter drizzle sprinkles and just some overall dampness developing through the morning commute tomorrow. But the big question is what about the storm chances? They will come into play tomorrow of the latest future cast timeout, the window of opportunity for a few storms and when we could see severe storms coming up. Thank you, Adam. Still to come on KSAT News at 5, the king of country. He's hitting the road this summer, but he's not going too far. Playing only one spot in Texas. We're going to tell you where and when. Plus, where you need to get your ticket information next. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. Legal whiplash over SB4 has a lot of people confused, but one asylum seeker's opinion is pretty clear. He calls it denigrating. We'll tell you why. 
And a city audit found that Animal Care Services is not properly monitoring some of its large rescue partners. What Animal Care Services has to say about that. That and more coming your way today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. Aggie land all abuzz. South Texas own country music legend George Strait making one stop in Texas this summer. It'll be the king of country's first ever concert at Kyle Field in College Station. Tickets go on sale next Thursday at 10 a.m. You can sign up for pre-sale access on KSAT.com right now. Just find this article on our website. That's pretty big news there. Oh, yeah. Live look outside with live cam. <laughs> Pretty much how it looked all day long today. We hardly saw any type of sun, but we're hoping to get some rain tomorrow. Yeah, we're hoping just don't get your hopes too high for much in terms of uh, accumulation in your rain gauge in your backyard. We'll have some areas of rain and overall dampness. So you're going to notice it, but I don't think it's going to amount to a whole lot. Main headlines here. Drizzle and sprinkles developing later on this evening and tonight. A stray storm tomorrow afternoon and evening, but overall accumulations. Right there, number three headline, unfortunately, minimal for more, most of us. We'll get into the details here in a moment. First, let's take a look at the rain chances throughout the day tomorrow. Tonight, sprinkles and drizzle. That's it. Tomorrow morning, we'll start with the dampness, some light rain, 40% coverage, but the drizzle's almost 100% coverage. We're all going to see some of that. We'll have some damp roads for the morning commute. Notice by noon through about 4 o'clock, Rain chances really fall off. We'll actually have some sunshine then. And then by tomorrow, late afternoon into the evening, those rain chances and storm chances, they get back up to 30%. So here's the big picture. Here's what we're watching. Not a whole lot of action out there right now. Just some clouds streaming overhead. West Texas getting some needed rainfall at the moment. Good for them. We're watching this swirl near Phoenix and Tucson. That's the upper level disturbance that's headed our way. Same one we were talking about yesterday, actually getting a little extra energy from a disturbance that came in off the Pacific. Anyway, that's headed toward us. It's going to continue to increase the development of very light sprinkles later this evening and tonight. Pockets of drizzle coverage for the light rain will be about 40%. But as I said before, the drizzle will be a nearly 100% coverage. Most of us not seeing a whole lot in terms of overall accumulations, just the general dampness tonight and first thing tomorrow morning. And then notice as we get into the afternoon tomorrow, a bit of sunshine, which will help destabilize our atmosphere a little bit. And if we can break through a little cap, then some thunderstorms could pop up after 4 p.m. tomorrow. So between about 5 p.m. and 10 p.m., that's when a few stray storms are possible tomorrow late afternoon into the evening. Future cast showing a little bit popping up uh, Bandera down to San Antonio, but don't pay close attention to the exact location the future cast is showing here. It could be anywhere across our area. Then by 11 p.m. and midnight, rain chances are gone again. So damp morning, bit of sunshine in the middle of the day, and then we see a slight chance of a few storms. However, this is one of those situations where the few storms that pop up do run the risk of becoming strong to severe. We're in basically a category two of five uh, for that chance of severe weather locally and east of town. Rainfall potential, I'm sorry, we're looking at a tenth to maybe a quarter of an inch for most of us. Where the rain's going to be more organized, farther east, Gonzales, Cuero, Hallettsville, and especially Houston. Must be nice, Houston, a good inch and a half likely around there, one to two inches, because that's where it's going to be more organized and pulled together. Temperature right now, 65, so below average. Dew point of 54. Dew points will rise a little bit tomorrow, a hint of humidity early. Then it falls off again for Friday, Saturday. And overall, we're not looking at a whole lot in terms of humidity in the over the next seven to 10 days. Here's the case at 12 hour forecast tomorrow. 58 degrees, 7 and 8 a.m. Drizzle. Sprinkles, overall dampness. By noon, we start to see a few breaks in the clouds at 68 degrees. And then we just have to keep an extra eye and ear out to the sky tomorrow between 5 and 10 p.m. for a few rogue storms that, if they develop, could be strong to severe. Mid-70s tomorrow for most of us. 80 degrees and sunny by Friday. Look at the weekend back in the 70s. And one more shot at rain early 
next week. Eclipse countdown at 6 o'clock. Ooh, thank you, Adam. <laughs> All right, so much of the NBA is coming down to crunch time. Who executes, who doesn't? Spurs did not last night. They did not, and once again, it's kind of been their, I guess, bugaboo all year yeah. long, right? Turnovers. I mean, that really cost the Spurs down the stretch last night against the Dallas Mavericks. And in March Madness, Colorado State is going to take on the Texas Longhorns. Coming up. Only 9% of the teams get an at-large bid. <laughs> So that's pretty special to do that. So let's go play. And we did tonight. And now we're excited about the next one. We get to go on a plane to Charlotte here, and we get ready for Texas on Thursday. Nico Medved and his Colorado State Rams will take on the Texas Longhorns in the men's big dance and big board sports. The Mavericks beat the Spurs 113 to 107 last night to sweep the four game season series. This game had 13 lead changes and went down to the final minute of play. And Pop said one thing cost his team. Look, you guys got stat sheets over there? No, I we out-rebounded them. We shot better than they did. We outscored them in the third quarter, outscored them in the fourth quarter. We had the same number of assists, basically. I think they had one more than we did. But we had 16 turnovers. That's the difference in the game. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of the way we played. We have all, made all kinds of mistakes. But so did they. And they want to win a championship. Uh, you know, our goal is to get better every game, individually and team-wise. And they did that. I'm really proud of what they did. All right, the Spurs will next host the Memphis Grizzlies Friday night at 7. The first four tipped off last night between number 10 seeds, Colorado State and Virginia. The Rams pulled away late in the first half to win an NCAA tournament game. It's the first time in 11 years, 67 to 42 is your final. Next, they'll face the Longhorns, who spoke today about needing to play better than they did in the Big 12 tourney when they lost in the first round. You know, it's the NCAA tournament. You know, everyone's urgent. Everybody wants to win games. We uh, didn't put our best foot forward in Kansas City, but we spent the last week getting better and progressing to uh, play our best basketball in March. There's some new guys on this team that haven't been to the tournament before, um, so they're excited for the opportunity to play. And then the guys that have been here before know what it's about, um, and everybody wants to make a run, so everyone's excited to play. Colorado State and Texas will play tomorrow at 5.50 p.m. at the Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. The first four contests between Wagner and Howard last night went down to the wire. Final seconds, the Bison are down three, and they missed three attempts at game-tying threes. Jordan Hairston missed two of those, and the Wagner Seahawks survived 71-68 and will play top seed North Carolina tomorrow. You have your bracket filled out? Uh, I do not have a bracket filled okay. out. Okay. Are you going to do one? I'm going to try. Okay. <laughs> All right. You have a bracket filled out? No, my son does. Okay. He wins every year. All right. I figured because LSU wasn't in it, you just decided to ask. Right. <laughs> I don't need to fill one out this year. <laughs> we'll be right back. Damp tonight and tomorrow morning, and then some sun before a slight chance of storms tomorrow afternoon and evening. By Friday, it's back to sunshine, 80 degrees this weekend, 70s, a mixture of sun and clouds. And uh, Monday morning, we could see a few pop-up thunderstorms. This is a beautiful sign of spring. I love all the photos. Keep them, com keep them coming into KSAC Connect. Another eclipse fact in the countdown at 6. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. See you back here at 6. World News is up next.